Okay, yeah, so today, uh, let me close this stuff. Wow, I don't know why that. So today, the what we're gonna try to do is finish up the markdown extensions I was building for Tech Letter app, and they're going to also be useful for a project I'm working on later on, probably more towards the end of April or maybe even in April, May. Holy shit, it's getting late in the year. So. The idea today is adding a Markdown extension that lets me automatically link to GitHub repositories and Twitter usernames. Hey, fuzzy buddy, uh, because I want to be able to have an easier time writing technical blog posts, technical newsletters, things like that. So we're going to add all the things that I usually waste time on. And then we're going to take it from there. All right. So. I got that. I should run yarn start locally. So yarn start on letter builder and I should open the other repository. Screenshot as a service, random coding, letter builder. Got that. Okay. That loaded and this needs to load. Come on, you can do it computer. You can compile the code. What can I quit of these things? Uh, not much. I can quit Slack, that's gonna help. And I can quit Telegram, should I quit Telegram? No, we can keep Telegram. Okay, so I got that. And we were working here on component did mount, we were calling GitHub and seeing if the results show up, right? And we were looking for remark.js Apparently there's nobody watching. I, I wonder if my stream is actually working correctly. I don't know. So hopefully if you're having trouble watching me, please tell me on one of the channels that exists. So command plus, we have here data and it's not ordered in any particular order. I'm gonna go to GitHub and try to replicate the way GitHub, is, GitHub does search. So if I search for remark.js, what do I get? Regex. What if I search for remark? Aha. Okay. So if I search for remark, then I should get gnab remark as the first result, right? Let's see. Gnab remark. Okay. Reload so that we get component did mount again. Hmm. Come on, you can do it, computer. So it's running the search in the background somewhere. And then it should console log the results. Ah, error making request. Right, because I'm making too many requests in a row. So how can I fix that? Okay, we're gonna move this to an actual, let's actually make a remark plugin. And we're gonna go from there. So let's see. We can remove Scratchpad, we can remove the welcome. So we're gonna go into use remark, uh, plus JavaScript. So we have URL thumbnail. And Candy Cane 20 has a question What's the difference between having a GitHub repo and making an NPM package? Is it just being to install it with NPM? Yes. So a GitHub repository. A GitHub repository lets you host code on GitHub and it gives you version control and the ability to share the code itself with other people. When you have an NPM pocket package, you're able to, people are able to actually install that by doing NPM install or yarn install. So think of it, GitHub is like sh sharing your source, source code. NPM is like releasing an open source project, if that makes sense. And fuzzy buddy, I am back to drinking white monsters because I got tired of the uh, unicorn, rainbow unicorn stuff. Okay, so let's see. We're gonna make yeah. um, click through mode always on top. Click through mode. Cool. So we have URL thumbnail, code screenshot, and then remark to react. In between, we're going to add use, uh, let's say, GitHub links. That makes sense? Yeah, GitHub links makes sense. 
So we're gonna we have remark GitHub links. So yeah, let's just call it GitHub links and say import. Let's make some spacing there. Import GitHub links from dot slash remark GitHub links. La, and then I'm going to make a new file that is going to start the same as this one. We're going to have a visit thingy and we are going to have to export default function. So function github links is a function and we export default github links like that and we save that as remark github links .js. Awesome. So we have the visit thingy and what do we get? We get we don't need any stuff but we get the tree and from the tree we return a new promise that takes an async fun that makes an async function with resolve and reject where's kiwi kiwi is in bed already because it's past 10 p.m and his bedtime is at 10 p.m okay so what else do i need new promise and we're going to resolve in the end so we have the resolve and this should now just work I'm going to say, uh, let's take out, where is it, letter renderer, app.js, did we take out component did mount? We should take component did mount stuff out. Okay, Babel JavaScript, blah. So we're going to make a link, yes, because that still makes sense. So remark, thumbnail, remark URL thumbnail, remark GitHub links. Um, so the syntax is going to be like this remark and we're going to link to remark.js remark and we're going to say gh right right so we have now a link that uses how do I click this away okay um, so we have now this is the syntax I want to use. We have we're gonna give it a title, and then instead of instead of providing the URL, we're just going to say gh colon, and that's going to yes, and that's going to automatically link to GitHub. So we now have this, and we're going to use the same pattern that I have here. So we're going to say visit tree every link in the tree. And instead of URL, it's going to take the URL and say if no.url. Does JavaScript already have a starts with function? JavaScript start with. Oh, it does. Nice. When did that get added? So we have node URL starts with. I had no idea that actually existed. We're going to say if the link starts with gh then let's see um if it starts with gh then what do we say hmm. now we're gonna take away yeah then we're going to say nodes to change push our node and that's all that we need and then when we are changing those nodes let's see so when we change the nodes how does that work da, da, da. aha yes for for const node in nodes to change right of nodes to change i always mess that one up I know, right? Starts with is the most specific. So it is actually a very common thing to check. And most other languages have that in their standard library. And I think it was very recently added to JavaScript. It's surprisingly common in a lot of in a lot of parsing. Uh, a lot of string parsing uses actually starts with. So we now have the node. We're going to keep the same node, except we're going to update the URL. So we're going to say const uh, query, or rather const query equals node.url.replace. 
and we're going to replace GH in the beginning with an empty thingy and that's going to be our query and then uh, I deleted it didn't I so now I don't know how to how to search let's see let's get it back so this is our result stuff okay so we're gonna take the first one because we can and because it makes the most sense so we go back to remark github links and we say import uh, github from github api and then we we can instantiate the same gh here so visit tree and then we instantiate gh we say this is react mode because i like that prettier more we pass our query into the search and then we console log our results and hopefully that's gonna help so now if i say remark is gh remark js slash remark aha and it gets really confused right so the problem now is github's api limits which we're gonna try to resolve in a little bit now let's see if we take the data why is this not ordered very well um okay let's try github and if our search is we mark js slash remark then the first result sort by best match okay how do we tell it to sort by best match let's go to github api and maybe the documentation will have some clues so we have github api uh, homepage github.com and apply within that's because they want maintainers api documentation for 3.1 and we look for search and we set four repositories so search user string blah search query um <coughs> for code search Okay, defaults, API base for code, for issues, for repositories. Search repositories, so maybe there's a way to sort the results. That's what I'm looking for. Sort, aha, uh -huh. sort the results by your default is best match. How do we unless another sort option is provided a square parameter results are sorted by best match as indicated by the score field for each item returned this is a computed value representing the relevance of an item relative to the other items okay uh, let's see archived score where is score owner size score 27 okay that's the first one what's the last one score where is it and please tell me if you can't see what I'm actually looking for score 26 uh, actually let's let's sort them by stars that's usually what we want isn't it um, Ha. Okay, so let's let's do it this way. We're going to say sort by stars and order is descending. So now the first result should be the most popular result that we get. I'm going to reload and then say remark um, gh remark js slash remark. And let's so the int what's interesting here is how many times it's running the search. I was hoping it would be a little smarter than that. 
So we're gonna have to add a debounce or a memoization helper of some sort. Okay, so we have data. The top one is completely wrong. What the fuck is this doing? Score 49. This isn't making any sense. Score 11. Okay, so let's see, what is it even trying to search by? Okay, so what is the benefit? Uh, Candy Cane is asking what is the benefit of uh, what's it called of markdown compared to just text formatting so the thing with markdown is that it's an easier fully text-based way of text formatting so if I open IA writer let's see let's make a new let's make a new one I can I can for example define something is as bold uh, saying like this is bold and then this is italic this is a title uh, what else can I do here are some block quotes um, and then I can say links are easy to write and I say HTTPS that letter dot app and I can also add images but I don't have do I have one interesting read so I can also say I need an image URL copy image address and I can say images are easy to spec and then and this is this is markdown so I'm able to just type 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 and very easily define mar uh, markup to define how things are supposed to look and then when it gets rendered it automatically renders correctly so it has titles it has bolds italics quotes and so on and this is see and this is just an easier way to right without focusing on mark on the actual markup so that's why a lot of people like writing in markdown because it's easier than going into word and specifying markup because you can just work in plain text mm. so it's becoming a standard faster and faster so slack uses markdown github uses markdown Stack Overflow I know uses Markdown and a lot of these input boxes are starting to use Markdown because it's easier to work with than YCWIG editors. So a lot of people, especially tech people, really prefer that So and I like it as well so I'm trying to make it easier for myself to use. Uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, console log query. Let's see what we're actually searching for. Okay. So if I say remark, then gh, gh, remark, gs, remark, aha. So that's the problem. It's actually firing, firing a search for every, for every input, which is not great. So le how can I fix that? Um, let's see, we're gonna debounce this. How do we debounce it? Oh wow, eight people, hello. Um, what's a good way to debounce this so that it's only running when there's actually some, let's say we wanna run it every 30 seconds. Um, ba -bam. I guess I can use, I can just use Lodash. That works. Mm, yeah. Let's do that. So let's try run. Let's try installing yarn add lodash dot debounce because I know lodash comes with a debounce implementation. So that's going to be easy to use. So we're going to say import debounce from lodash debounce like that. And then how does lodash debounce actually work? Uh, it's been a while since I used lodash because it's increasingly less use becoming less important and less useful so debounce 
uh -huh, takes a wait so we can export our github links function as a debounced function let's see debounce and let's say we want to run it every js slash remark that was still way too often so that didn't work um what else can we do okay so debouncing didn't work let's try making our own debounce function oh that's why it didn't work let's try reloading this from scratch and see if that helps but basically the problem right now is that this okay so let's fix that we're going to add a memoization of some sort. Do, do, do. Console log query. So where is it rendered? Use remark. It's running that every time. So if we look at use remark, it's running the effect every time that the input changes, um, which works but it has really no whether this particular node has been processed before. So we have nothing to base our, um, what were they gonna say? There's nothing to base our inputs on, or yeah. What we can do, mm, no, that's not gonna work either. How would we know that we finished typing? Because let's see, if I paste, if I paste it in, then it's going to work. So we can say remark, remark gh, remark js, remark. So if I paste that in, then it's going to be fine. See, it's fine. It only does it once. But when I'm typing it in. That's when, prob that's when there's a problem. But I don't have a way of knowing that I've already finished unless I do it this way. So I can say remark gh way. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, yeah. So remark, remark js, remark. Oh. Um, let's try it again. Remark gh remark js remark so that's rendering it once but then it reruns on every input which is not great so that means that we're gonna have to have a memoization feature here so that when we are making the same query multiple times that doesn't mess it up And after that, we're going to deal with, uh, what was I gonna say? With trying to type it in live. So we paste that, data, blah. And the first one is not the one we want. Why not? So number four, is the uh, owner blah private score 2239 so why does remark lint have a bigger score score 167 wait 167 so i'm trying to figure out now how they're ordered maybe i have to order them myself so 167 this one is score 239 so they're not actually sorted okay so we have our results and then we let's say console log result sort by is it sort by or is it sorted um, JavaScript sort by uh, array sort. I know sort by exists as well. 
under JavaScript sorted. Or the sort take a function? I always forget. It does take a function. Okay. So we let's see console log result.sort where we take a and b and return a dot score minus b dot score and let's see what that returns so i'm now gonna paste that in let's see paste type error result dot sort is not a function right result dot data dot sort is a function markdown bam and the first one is aha it needs to be exactly the other way around so that they get sorted correctly or they get reverse sorted basically M, and we have remark js remark perfect so that's going to be our thing how do we get does this give us a url so archive url clone url commit url uh, forks url full name get refs get url homepage remark js hooks url html url what is the that makes no sense so we're gonna use the html url i think e Yes, HTML URL, that's gonna be the one we use. So I'm going to say node.url equals um, result.data.sort first.html URL. Okay, so you can't really see that, but now that it reloaded, you can. So if I do this, it renders and as you can see if i click on that it links me straight to the repository which is exactly what i wanted i can now i basically now have the ability to link to any github repository without having to specify what it is like as long as i can fuzzily search for it it's automatically going to link so i can say gatsby repo and say gh gatsby and that's going to link let's see bam and no come on i know you can do it <sighs> aha so that's the problem it's uh it's failing hmm why is it failing so I think we're gonna have to do it the other way, where the actual search happens afterwards. That's gonna be the only way, I believe. So let's do that. Yeah, it's gonna have to render as a React method. Let's see. So if I take, uh, let's, take all of this and see if it works yes uh, why did I save bam paste this is, and it's now running search github searches in the background talking to the API and eventually it's going to just show up I think it should I don't actually know what's going on there we go yeah so it errors out which is not great so we are going to change this uh, I'm going to take this out and we're going to change it to say for const node of nodes to change we're going to ch say that node.url is going to stay the same does it actually have to search maybe we can do this as a static mm, no it's better if it searches so we're going to say node. 
URL is going to stay the same, but the type is going to change. So node.type is going to be uh, GitHub link. Yeah. So type is going to be GitHub link, and I can then go to use remark. And here we're going to say we are handling uh, GitHub link. Okay, let's change it so that it's using camel cases. GitHub link is with GitHub handler. Uh, okay, let's do let's do this. Let's say custom handler, which takes a type and returns a function that does things. There, so we can now say custom handler of screenshots and then custom handler of github link and then screenshots are rendered as screenshots github link is rendered as github link so we're going to import let's just let's just copy it from there so we, we can say import github links and github link from remark github links we go to remark github links and that exports github links and github link like that so then we have a function called github link so class github link which is a function that does what Um, it's a function that let's see what does the screenshot one do it takes a node so it takes a node and it's going to first return a loading so return and it's going to say what's it gonna say let's say it just returns searching for node.url Let's see what happens. Uh, class GitHub link, parsing error, unexpected token, what? I don't understand what's wrong. Import react from react. Oh, because I said class, not const. That's what's wrong. So, const github link equals node, like that, and then I can paste one in, and it says searching for, searching for, so we say searching node URL, okay, and then we can do this stuff. So we can say const um, link and set link or let's say URL and set URL URL set URL and we're going to say use state that starts with null so we take use state from react and we're also going to use use effect use effect from react so we take github blah set URL and then we have use effect which is a function that changes based on the node URL. Yes. So when node URL changes, or let's just say when the node changes, we are rerunning our GitHub search. So node. Okay. URL set URL, use state null. And then we say we copy all of this stuff so we take the github client and then we take we create the query for the for the search get the result and do stuff and then if we want to wait use async await
Okay, so if we want to use async await, this needs to be another function. So async uh, blah that does stuff that gets called immediately. No, come on. Async function blah and we immediately execute the function not with the node like that so we put a we pass a function into use effect that returns a function that is immediately called and that internal function can be an async function so that we can have async await inside so that we can use async await inside does that make sense i think it makes sense so we got that for repositories then we have uh, Come on, where was I? So we get const URL equals result data with the HTML URL. And we say set URL with the URL. Okay. And now down here, if the URL is specified, then we return a graph of URL with um, node dot I think it's no dot title Blah. and uh, candy cane could I have used GraphQL instead of a normal query search yes I think I believe um, I believe github does expose a GraphQL API and I could have used that but the this was a library I found that already exists so it was easiest to just use that and not have to think about it too much, to be honest. So let's see if it works now. So we paste that, it says searching and then it dies. If effect, an effect function must not return anything besides a function. Yes. Right. Um, so let's say function blah. Blah. Okay, so now it's not gonna yell at us, at least. Um, and let's console log the node so that I know what it's actually supposed to be returning. Bam, let's see. Type is ti uh, title is null. Position children, type text. Ah. Okay, so a link node gets a child with its um, thing, and we can say values. So node children zero uh, dot value, that's our title. So let's see, paste, searching gh remark. Nice. Okay, so that worked. I can now paste another one here and we will, bam, cool. Ah. Okay, so that is now the problem. We now have a problem because these things are searching so basically every time that we re-render our uh, markdown renderer we are refetching everything which is a pretty big mess so let's see if i can fix that let's um git status we're gonna try to memoize stuff so git at source we say git commit minus a minus m uh what was i gonna say git commit minus a minus m um yes uh, searching for github repos automatically cool now let's see um pa -pam. what was i doing 
Live code, blah. Okay, so I have a bunch of post-its here that for some reason I'm organizing right now, which is not a great idea. Let's see, what's next? We got all of that. The next step is... I know what the next step is. The next step is going to be to... Um, let's see... I was gonna say something useful. Ah, we were gonna use React me Memo a little bit more. So let's see, Swizzets React Memo. I know I've written about this before. Okay, so React Memo, how do I use that? Time slicing, React Memo. Okay, but how do I tell React Memo? important stuff. So I need to tell React Memo what we're actually depending on. React.memo cool memo okay is there a way to tell it what to actually depend on? Aha! Okay, so we're going to say github link is react.memo which takes our component and it's going to take a function with pref props and next props and we're going to say that this function is exactly the same if return true it, if it would return the same result so we're going to say it's the same result let's see so if ah okay so we're going to split this into URL and so you eh, okay, pref props next props and we're going to say if pref props dot URL is the same as next props dot URL then we don't re-render it and what else can we say? And uh, we also want the title to be the same. So pref props dot children zero dot value is the same as next props dot children zero dot value, right? And I know that's kind of hiding behind the chat screen, the chat room thingy. So return true if passing next props to render would return the same result as passing pref props. So if the URL is the same or if the rendered value is the same, so the title. Now let's see. Uh, I'm going to here console log and let's say rendering no.url so that will help us see when it's actually being rendered. Let's see. So we take the remark one and we paste it in. So it's rendering and it's rendering and it shows up and then we add oh cannot read property zero of undefined <sighs> right 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 because it's pref props dot node dot url next props dot node dot url and pref props dot node dot children and next props dot node dot children so we try that again so paste, searching Gatsby, and turns into a link. Come on. I know I know you're gonna do this. Why is it taking so long? Okay, let's try that again. Reload paste. Searching Gatsby gets the result and then it just keeps going. Why does it keep going? Okay, let's try again. Let's get the remark one. I know that one works. Remark JS remark and it's uh, 403. So let's try again. 
Again, a 403, okay. So I have to wait a little bit for the GitHub API to cool off. And I'm starting to think it would have been easier to just use GraphQL. Um, let's see, is, is the GitHub API, <clears throat> the GitHub API library potentially trying to walk through all of the pages or something? Uh, let's try that again. So I'm going to paste the remark one, the remark example, and it renders. Now when I make more, when I type more, hey Mario. So it is still re-rendering a couple times, which is not great. Now let's try adding the Gatsby one. Searching Gatsby, rendering Gatsby, and just keeps going. So why does it keep going? I can't tell why this keeps going. So sort updated per page, page nine. page four okay so github api the library that i'm using keeps going through ev trying to go through every page which is not great because we are only really we're really only looking for the first result so how do i tell it to only return the first result um, and adding react memo did help a little bit but we're going to try adding another trick on top of that and I also just realized while building this that this approach of doing search of offloading searches to the react component that's rendering stuff won't exactly work when I try to start using this at build time when I try when I'm adding support for to blocks but that's going to be that's going to be a fun project for May. That's We're going to do that in May, I promise. Right now, I'm just trying to get this part to work. Um, okay, so let's see. Get status, get log. Uh-huh. How do I tell it to only get one page? Let's go back to here. So search.js, the promise for the for repositories, search programs. Mm. Now, okay, so we're gonna have to go to requestable. Aha, uh -huh. requestable date ISO get options with defaults. And we say all pages request all make a request and fetch all GitHub will paginate responses. How do I tell it not to do that? So I think we're gonna have to go into the actual code base. Let's see. Um, rate limit. GH get rate limit, blah, no. Okay. <clears throat> Lib search. So we are doing, we're making a search. Search options. This is, what are we doing? Await GH dot search for repositories with our options aha and our options where are they create a search oh let me zoom in so you can see what i'm actually looking at q sort order with options
I'm trying to figure out where these options go. Um, all pages. No. So then requestable pages. Uh, okay, let's go back here. So we make a search for repositories, which goes into this search, gives it what song am I playing? Um, let's see. I am playing Fuck Authority by Pennywise right now. But basically I'm using the Me First and the Gimme Gimme's radio on Spotify. Hey Magdi, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? <clears throat> Wow, oh, my, I'm a little sick, so I'm my voice is running out. I'm trying to figure out right now how to tell GitHub API, the GitHub API library, to not try to go through all of the search results. So it does a search, which runs request all pages. Why does that request all pages? Right. That's annoying. So it's automatically going through all of the pages, which is exactly what I don't want, because then it runs out of the API limit and everything gets messed up. Uh, so what else can we check? Adding GraphQL right now, I feel like would be a bit much. What else can we try? JavaScript GitHub API client. Libraries, GitHub developer guide. Ooh. Third party, Octokit, REST.js. I wonder if this works. Um, does going live make me focus on coding? It does actually, it helps a lot. So let's see, in the browser. Okay, let's try that then. So, yarn, remove GitHub API. <coughs> and let's try that. Yarn add at octokit slash rest. And we say const octokit equals request oh, import octokit from at octokit rest. So this is the new AP client we're using. See authentication below. Okay, and then we say here when we are instantiating, let's instantiate the client here and say const octokit equals new octokit. Um, doesn't take any API things yet. So then how do we um, API previews, request formats, let's see, search, uh, octokit, Arr. what did I do, octokit, res.js, I'm going to try to see how to make a search request with octokit, search. Activity, apps, gists, emojis, interactions, issues, markdown, migrations. Uh, we're looking for repositories. Users, teams, search. Search for repos. Search repositories. Aha! So we are going to say here, 
const result equals await octokit dot search dot repos where we have q is our query and the rest stays the same and we are going to only take page zero sorts by by blah per page default value is page one q is query so we gotta take the query here um, and that returns what? Okay, I'm not sure what it returns, but I'm hoping it returns the same thing that the other client did. And let's see if that works. So we got that. Now we paste in our first example that we know worked. Searching gh remark js and result data is blah. Okay. So let's console log the result here. Console log result. And we get what? Data items. Ah, of course. Why would it be the same as it was before? Result.data.items and we take the first one bam search turns into remark and then if we take Gatsby bam okay that worked nice cool git status git commit minus same minus same uh, make working or like let's say working implementation of github search through markdown sweet so now the next thing i can do is we're going to add a memoization so that if this fails or rather so that it's not hitting the github api every time um I'm, and i'm just gonna call it cache so we're going to say uh const um, const github cache or let's say let let github cache and here we're going to say const query and then if github cache of query already exists then we say set URL to GitHub cache of query. Else, avoid making the same search multiple times. Right, right. Otherwise, we do the stuff here. So const result await octokit search dot repos. Set URL URL. And we and we also save it to cache GitHub cache cache of query equals URL. So now we can here say console log searching for query. So now we're going to see how often it's actually searching for something. Let's try it again. So I'm going to take this and it searches and it searched for it once and now no matter how many changes I make it's never going to search for it again. Then I can run this again, run this one and it also only searches once. Now where, where things become tricky is writing new stuff from scratch because I will say gh dot use dimensions and you see it completely blew up my did it eventually pro our site redux app used to build scripts wow um, let's see what about swizzit slash yeah so see it's not um, so now it's not working because because it's making too many searches 
So what can we do? We can now try to debounce this one and that might help. So we're going to say import debounce from low dash dot debounce here and we're going to say debounce this method that does all of this stuff and we're going to debounce it to every 3000 to every three seconds What? Why is that complaining? Await octokit, right? Because this needs to be an async function. Async, which means we no longer need this one to be async. Like that, so that's gonna help. And now let's see if that works. Uh, right from scratch gh swizzet slash use dimensions searching for so debouncing doesn't really work because I want it to hmm that's interesting so I don't want it to basically debounce and then replay everything I want it to skip so basic we can make our own debounce okay let's try to write a skip debounce function skip debounce let's see so mm, function skip debounce which takes a function and a timeout timeout and we say what so it's gonna have to know when it's being called or rather it needs to know the last time it was called so return function okay, let's say um, yeah, so it's returning, it needs to return a closure, which is a function that then gets called immediately, but that function internally says has a last call is on new date. Uh, uh, This is hard. So we need a function that keeps the last time it was called in a... Okay, let's try. So functions keep the bounce. Um, and it says let last call is new date then if timeout if new date is more than last call minus timeout uh, get time yeah if new date is more than timeout sec timeout milliseconds ago then we call function else Then we say last call equals new date and we call function. Otherwise, we don't do anything, right? Which means we have to return a function that runs that. So skip the bounce sets the timeout and then returns a function and that function internally checks when the last time it was called was and if that is more than timeout ago then it runs the 
function otherwise it doesn't let's try we're gonna see if this actually works so blah typing from scratch <clears throat> gh swizzet slash use dimensions now <sighs> Why is this so hard to do? I used to know this is like a weird functional programming trick that I'm trying to achieve and I'm not having a lot of luck with. Maybe I should talk to Kyle Shevlin. He he knows how to do functional stuff. Okay, let's try it this way. We return a closure that starts with a uh, last call. Okay. So we're now creating a closure that has last call. Um, does the return function from skip the bounce actually get invoked? Yes, it does actually get invoked because we are calling it here. So skip the bounce returns a function and then we are immediately invoking it. But we want this invocation to only happen every three seconds, which is where I am having issues. So we, okay, let's try that. Console log of, now that this is going to be the first call now. Let's see, console log, first call. Okay, let's see what happens. So, la, gh. Skip the bounce is not a function. Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, I know, right? Well, the reason calling an API is so involved is because we're trying to avoid calling it too many times. And that's where things usually get tricky. Like we got the actual API call done quite a while ago. So let's say const first call equals new date. And then we return a function that console logs the first call and only calls again if new date blah. Yes. So let's say blah 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 gh dot swizzet slash c use dimensions. Uh, ba -bam. So first call kept getting updated which is a problem oh right I think I know what the problem is so let's see const last call is going to get initialized and then new date last call new date let's see what does new date get time actually do new date dot get time yeah so if new date dot get time is more than last call get time minus timeout then we call the function and we update last call to new date dot get time right right 
dot get time. And I think what I was doing wrong was redefining. So here we were redefining the function every time. So let's try changing that. Uh, let's make that call API. And we're going to say const call API equals skip the bounds of async blah rather let's do it in here so there and a call API needs to get a query so that is a query function like that so we now have a call API function that takes a query. Um, so it takes a query and then it does debouncing. But instead of redefining the debounce every time, we're only doing it once when the thing is first initialized. So let's try that. Blah, blah, blah. GH dot swizzet, swizzet slash use dimensions. And uh, I can't tell if that worked or not. I don't think it did. Because now it's never searching for the thing. Let's see. Console log. Uh, console log. Last call. Well, let's do it this way. Last call. And then console log attempting call. Right. Let's try that. Blah blah blah. GH swizzet slash use dimensions. So it's now always calling this and it's not actually so this is being called every time and it then returns a function but this function attempting call literally never gets called because let's see call API takes a query skip the bounce then creates a new function that takes a function yeah I'm not invoking it in the timeout that's the problem but I'm not even getting here So, like, I'm not even checking if the thing is blah. Um, let's see. Call API gets takes a query and returns a debounced function. That debounced function never gets called what if we do it this way skip the bounce so call API now that needs to take a query because we are creating aha we can do it this way skip the bounce can take a query here So then call API I think I'm confusing myself
So this function here needs to take a query. So that takes a query. Uh, function with arguments. See, this is where functional programming gets really difficult. It kind of breaks my brain sometimes. I feel like I'm trying to be too clever. So skip the bounce takes a function. That function takes a query parameter. When we call this, we get back a function. So when we call skip the bounce, we get a function back that looks like this. On every invocation of the function, of every invocation of itself, it is supposed to make sure it doesn't get run. Function, function, blah. So, skip the bounce function. Okay, I think that should work. Let's try it. Blah, blah, blah. GH, Swizzit slash use dimensions. Okay, so at least it's trying it now. So searching for arguments. Attempt to call. Okay, so it's still, it's attempting the call too many times. Now let's see, um, is it apply? JavaScript apply. I'm never sure if it's apply or if it's call. JavaScript function apply. Um, apply. Uh -huh. apply takes function okay, so apply the arguments this is going to call the function with whatever argument we pass in here so we should now in theory have um, console log okay let's say const now equals new date dot get time and then attempting call, let's say last call minus now, or now minus last call. This should tell us what the actual delta was between when the last call was made and when we're attempting to call the function again. And then here we can say console log calling. Okay. Now let's see. Uh, blah blah blah. GH Swizzit slash use dimensions. Searching for undefined. Arbor. So these these deltas are not timeout at all. last call plus timeout so that's what I was doing wrong now it's actually gonna call it every three seconds G GH Swizzit slash use dimensions new okay so Delta 17 milliseconds how can we know let's do now and last call plus timeout blah 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 gh swizzit slash ok 
Okay, so if last call plus timeout, so that's since the last time it was called plus the plus three seconds, that needs to be less than the current time. That needs to be less than now. And then we're actually gonna call it. Oh, that's actually working. I'm just being dumb. GH wizard slash use dimensions okay but but now it's never being called this is too hard okay you know what I'm gonna not deal with any debouncing at all instead we're just gonna use the normal async query here so we're going to have a an async function inside a function that does all the things like that and then here we're going to have to search for the query and set URL. Okay, let's see. So, pa. Okay, no. What's it complaining about now? Like that. Will that work? No. Prettier, what are you complaining about? Skip the bounce. Where do we even have skip the bounce? Ah, up here. Okay. So I can take, re get rid of that. And then we paste this stuff back in. And we say const result, blah. What's it complaining about? Set URL. Da, da, da. Okay, do we actually have to have it in uh, parentheses? Yes. Okay, so that's in parentheses now. Const result, octokit search, query, page one, get stuff. And here we're going to say try. Uh, catch error um, is there a catch finally uh, JavaScript try catch finally uh -huh, no Okay, so we don't really have a finally. Okay. So this is gonna be kinda messy. Or, uh, Yeah, okay, so. We need here to call a function. So this needs to have an infinite recursion, huh? Yes. Um, so we're going to say function. Let's call it an async function. Get URL that does all of this stuff. And then we don't need this one anymore. that so we now have an async function get URL and get URL does all of the things yeah so candy cane raises a good point because I'm using multiple languages in general I sometimes get confused by what which language can do and what they can't so we get we have an async function oh shit it's almost midnight already I should probably go to bed but I want to get this done so if there's an error, we're going to set timeout 
and then call get URL again um, in like five, five seconds and we're going to say let retries equal zero and we're going to say retries plus equal one if retries is less than let's say five then we're going to retry again after five seconds um, so let's see blah 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 gh swizzet slash use dimensions let's see if that works so it should eventually show up I think but I'm not actually oh no it's not gonna show up because get URL we need to actually call it for the first time so blah 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 gh swizzet slash use dimensions and it eventually succeeded That's never gonna work. Yeah, so see it keeps it keeps trying to do it with bad inputs. But I'm pretty sure that if I add if I add it like this, then it should work. Let's try again. Bam. Bam. Okay, so I spammed I spammed GitHub too much right now, so this isn't gonna work. But we did our best. So I'm going to call this uh, successful. Yeah, let's call it successful. So let's see git status, git commit minus m minus m um almost able to deal with search errors git push origin master yeah so that's gonna be that i'm going to now make a little um i'm gonna make a little gif to see just so I can post something on the Twitters and we'll see if it works. So blah record video no. record video bam and let's see record gif let's see if that works bam Awesome. We got a GIF that we can share on Twitter and that's going to be it from me for tonight. I'm probably not going to be live coding tomorrow because I have a family dinner of some sort, but I will likely be here again maybe on Saturday, definitely on Sunday. So thanks everyone for watching and I will see you again next time.